Hey brothers, what's going on? JK and Maisie here, founder and head coach at PornReboot.com. And today we're going to be talking about the different reasons why you hate or why you dislike yourself when you're trying to end your out of control behavior with pornography, masturbation, or any other sort of sexually compulsive behavior. Now, early on when I was trying to end my out of control behavior, I'll be very honest with you, I disliked myself and that created a set of behaviors which were really disturbing now that I get to look back at them in retrospect. And the good news is because I've been able to identify these behaviors, I've also been able to help my clients identify them in their lives. And so today I'm going to share a handful of some of the reasons why we not only hate ourselves, but why we also stay hating ourselves. And I also want to kind of preface this by letting you know that a lot of these reasons on the surface, when I explain them to you, might not make sense to you because not all of them are behaviors that we exhibit consciously. A lot of them are unconscious behaviors. So I would recommend that you take a moment to actually think about how you might be exhibiting them in your life before you discount them. The first one is because it's easier to predict things happening. And what this means is that when you dislike yourself, you also realize that other people, as you go through life, are also going to dislike and reject you. That's just the way life goes. Not everybody is going to like you. Not everyone is going to like your ideas or what you represent. However, you have low self-esteem and you don't want to experience the pain of rejection or the pain of somebody disliking you. And so you use that as an excuse to justify hating yourself. Here's an analogy for you. It's as if you're wearing dry clothes. And for some reason, on a particular day, there's a risk that if you went outside, that somebody would splash water on you. And that would be uncomfortable because you're dry. You're good. You're comfortable being dry. And somebody splashing water on you would make you uncomfortable. So you take a bucket of water and you dump it over your head and you stay wet all the time. Anytime you're about to get dry, you pour water on yourself. Because if you were to go out, and somebody splashed water on you, well, it's not going to be that big of an inconvenience if you are already wet. Now that might sound like an extreme analogy, but think about it. That's literally what it's like walking around disliking yourself. And that is one of the reasons why a lot of men stay disliking themselves. Well, I'm going to get rejected anyway, but better for me to reject myself first. That's the first reason. So take a moment, if you wanna pause the video to think about that, do so. Take a moment to think about it. The second reason why you stay hating yourself and you stay disliking yourself is because once in a while, you actually get some sort of positive attention. Now this is sad to admit, but I'm gonna be straight with you guys. I used to do this way back in the day when I was an addict. See, I realized that if I expressed my self-pity and how much I didn't like myself, well-meaning people, people who had a caring personality or people who actually cared about me would give me attention, at least for a while anyway. They would say things like, JK, come on, you're not that bad, you're a pretty intelligent guy, you're a nice guy, you're a this and you're a this, and I would feel good. But because I wasn't willing to put in the work to actually become a certain type of person and get the validation that comes from putting in the work, I would basically stay disliking myself and express it in a very real way, how much I didn't like myself or how much I hated myself, just to get the pity and the support of others. In fact, you might have done this or you might be doing this, but I used to be a huge offender when it came to attractive women who had put me in the friend zone. This is super sad to go back to, but I have to do it because I know that there are brothers out there who are doing the same thing right now. I would be friends with attractive women. They saw me as a brother, very sad situation. But once in a while, I would say something or I would come back and you know whine to them about how this woman I was trying to date, how things didn't go well. Well, after all, you know, of course she wasn't attracted to me because 
you know, I'm stupid, I'm not attractive, I do stupid shit. And this attractive friend of mine, she'd be like, oh no, you're not, you're such a nice guy, you deserve this, you deserve better. And I'm ashamed to admit right now, well actually, I'm beyond that. The truth is that I don't think I'm really ashamed about it now, but it was what I used to do. I would feel good, I'd be like, that's a hot chick, like, you know, comforting me. And the truth is, at the end of the day, was I didn't like myself. But I stayed that way because once in a while I got pity. And I really want you to ask yourself if you're doing that. Because there's some grown ass men out there, I was a grown ass man, there's some grown ass men out there who are married, who have kids, who still do that once in a while. Who still purposely will do things, they'll fuck things up and they're like, ah, fuck up, I always fuck things up, blah, 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 blah. And you're doing it just to manipulate the people around you who care for you to express that, hey, you're actually a great guy. The third reason why you stay hating yourself is so that you don't have to take any risks. And what that means is you've already set the bar so low for yourself. And so it's just easy to be lazy because you already hate yourself. There's no point in trying to change yourself. There's no point in taking a big risk because you're going to fuck up anyway, and you know that when you screw up, you feel bad about yourself. You know that when you screw up and you take a big risk and it fails, well, I'm gonna hate myself anyway because I think I'm gonna fail at anything. So, it's an easy way to stay in a state where you don't take risks. It doesn't matter how healthy you are. Most people are aware of risks. Most people don't want to take risks. And if they do take risks, they take calculated risks. And the people who take risks that aren't calculated, well, they're just not thinking straight. Doesn't mean that they're porn addicts. But for the most part, emotionally healthy people are wary of taking risks. But they do realize that in life, you've got to take some risks at a certain point. But when you don't like yourself, when you hate yourself, there is no reason for you to take risks. You have this huge excuse holding you back which you may never verbalize because it's unconscious. And that's because I don't like myself. And I don't like myself enough to even take a risk. The next reason is more of a belief. And I've noticed it a lot in different types of men, but I've also noticed it especially in religious men who don't like themselves. And it's the belief that pride or ego of any kind is not a good thing. You know the saying, pride goes before the what? Before the fall. So a lot of guys use this to justify not liking themselves because they're like, well, you know what? If I start liking myself, if I start telling myself that I'm great, that I can win at anything I put my mind to, not win, but I can accomplish anything I put my mind to, that I'm a happy person, I'm a healthy person, I'm terrific, I love myself. You tell yourself, well, all that is very prideful, right? It's just giving me a big head to literally tell myself that I'm great, to tell myself that I'm better than the person that I used to be. That's pride, and I'm not going to give in to that evil pride. And I notice that also a lot with religious men. I'm not knocking any religion, but I do speak to men who will say things like, well, you know, I was thought that I was born a sinner. And there's a positive way to look at this as a religious person, and there's also a negative way to look at it. The negative way is to say, I was born a sinner, that's who I am, and I can never change, I can never be redeemed, and thus I will just keep disliking myself, because what's the point of even changing? We are people who were doomed from the moment that we were born, and developing ego and pride is going to do nothing but cause you pain. But of course, you've never actually developed a healthy self-esteem. You don't know the difference between ego, pride, and self-esteem. And so you just prefer to label everything and put it in one box as bad stuff. But why are you doing that? You're doing that because you prefer to dislike yourself. This is your area of comfort. The next reason why you stay disliking or hating yourself sometimes has to do with your environment and your community. Some of us, unfortunately, were raised by parents, by guardians, by whoever. But we were raised within a family or community where a lot of people dislike themselves. And we didn't know it, but we started picking up on those habits when we were growing up. 
See, all the previous reasons why I mentioned that you don't like yourself could have been things that maybe your father, your mother, your older brother, an uncle, an aunt, whoever raised you may have exhibited in their life. You may have seen your dad do things like not take risks because he didn't like himself. You may have seen, it may have been your dad or your mom or somebody in your life who told you that pride goes before a fall. Don't tell yourself that you're good at something. He may have told you, you need to keep hating yourself because you're never going to be good enough. So I don't know what the message that you received is. But if you surround yourself with people who don't like themselves, then that is where you're going to be comfortable. You're going to be comfortable around people who have that same mindset. And a lot of it is unconscious. I'll show you a way to kind of find out if you fall into this category. See, early on, when I used to hate myself, I would get very uncomfortable when I was around a group of people who were healthy emotionally. And what that meant is I would think that something was off. It didn't mean that these were happy-go-lucky people singing Kumbaya and anything like that. No, these were just people who the vibe they gave off was that they were very comfortable within themselves, they were willing to take risks, they were positive, and you ask them how they felt about themselves, they would say things like, I feel great, I feel like it can be done, I could do this. Yeah, like, dude, I'm excited, we can do this. That was very, very strange to me because the community that I was around, when I asked people about things, they'll be like, I don't know, I don't know, man, that's... You gotta be careful about stuff like that, man. You gotta be careful, dude. You know, remember that last time that you fucked up at this other thing? I don't know if you can do it, man. I'd be careful, bro. I'd be careful. I read about this. I heard about this. So that was the type of community I was around. Those were the people that I surrounded myself with, right? And so when I was around people who cared for themselves, who liked themselves, who said that I could do certain things, it was really uncomfortable. I didn't know why, but it was really because I didn't put myself around them enough. And so I felt very comfortable and I would quickly retreat to the status quo. I would retreat to a place where people disliked themselves for the most part, where people could have been dysfunctional. I was like, yeah, I can function here. Like, this is cool. I get it. I get it when people talk about fucking up. I get it when people talk about breaking up. I get it when people talk about slipping and relapsing and how fucked up their life is. Like, I get it. This is life. Life is suffering. Life is pain. Fuck the government. Everything. We are victims. I was so comfortable being there. And you might be too. And once you develop a sense of self-awareness of like how much you don't like yourself and the little unconscious things that are holding you back there, man, it's like day and night. You won't want to be in certain environments and in certain communities. And the final reason why you stay disliking or hating yourself is because it just justifies you not taking care of yourself as a person. And I really mean basic things like your hygiene, like dressing up, like eating healthy, like wanting to look good for yourself. When you dislike yourself, you start letting all these things go. And it doesn't mean that you don't want to change because you're like, it's so much easier when you dislike yourself because the thought process you know you're gonna have is, what's the point, right? What's the point of dressing up of losing weight, of putting on muscle mass, of being healthy, of trying to take care of myself financially, being financially secure, of trying to end my addiction when people don't like me. That's your assumption because you don't like yourself. What's the point of doing those things when, oh, when all women are this, women are not interested in that. You know, oh, what's the point of doing that when our careers are rigged against us? You know, the economy is rigged against us. What's the point of doing this when I'm this race or I'm this ethnicity? You know, like everything's against me. What's the point when I'm going to fuck up anyway? Like I'm not good at anything. I fuck up at everything I do. Now, I want to make it clear. You're not verbalizing these things, okay? These are just thoughts that are coming very rapidly in your head, but they are constant throughout your day. And what you don't realize is because you keep thinking these self-loathing thoughts over time, that is who you end up becoming. That's just the data that you're giving your mind. And it agrees with you. Your subconscious mind goes like, well, sure, if that's the message you're giving me, then there's no point in making any of these changes. 
And that's why whenever you get a short burst of motivation, you watch a video, you listen to a podcast, something happens in your life that impacts you and you make a decision that you are going to change your life. The reason why you're not able to stick with any of those things is not really because of willpower for the most part. With porn addiction it is. However, for many other things in your life, it's simply because you've given yourself all these messages based on the fact that you don't like yourself. So one of the things we do in the Porn Reboot system is that we slowly show you in the first couple of weeks of your reboot how to start liking yourself, how to start caring for yourself. I've said it before and I will say it again that when you're trying to end your out of control behavior and transform your life, you cannot work against your brain. You have to work with your brain. And working against your brain is hating yourself and telling yourself something like, oh, I'm gonna dress good, I'm gonna look good, I'm gonna do all these different things, when that goes against the message that you've been giving your brain for years. You have to change the message first. So brother, those are a few reasons why you stay hating and you stay disliking yourself. I'd love to know what you think in the comment section below. And brother, whenever you're ready, there are a couple of ways that I can help you end your out of control behavior with porn, sex, or masturbation. Now the first way is to download a free copy of my ebook. And there's a link to download it in the description below this YouTube video. It's called Seven Secrets of Porn Free Men. And it's just a basic roadmap of how my program works. If you're curious about it, oh, what's the system, what are the coping strategies, all this stuff that you talk about, JK, download the book. It's a short book. It's free. Read it. The second way is to join our free Facebook group. Right? It's called the Porn Reboot Group. This is where you can find an accountability partner and you can find other men who are following our system, men who are serious about rebooting. And the final way that we can help you is you want to find out if you're qualified to work with me and my team members to help you end your out-of-control behavior. So if you'd like to end it faster, like you've been doing stop fapping, you've been doing semen retention, all these things, and they haven't been working for you. Listen, I wanna work with a system that can teach me how to control my behavior within 90 days, then we might be able to help you. Well, we gotta get on the phone with you to find out if you qualify first. So there's a link to complete a survey, get on the call with me or one of my team members, we'll ask you a couple of questions to see if you're qualified, and then you can find out more about the program, whether it's a good fit or not. Now, if you enjoy these videos, I release a video four times a week, every week consistently. You can learn a lot. If you enjoy it, you wanna see more of these videos, don't forget to subscribe. And once you subscribe, click on the little bell icon. That way you get these notifications when I release videos. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch these videos. And I'll speak to you later on in the week.